What I really needed was to recreate myself, which means to bring something new into the world that has never existed before. If you became the number one best-selling nonfiction writer in the history of Amazon, would you think that that person knows what they're talking about? <laughs> A little bit. Right? Who do you think it is? I know, because I, I heard it, but... I was surprised. It's Tom Rath. I was very surprised, yeah. He's the author of Fill Your Bucket, or How Full Is Your Bucket in the Strength Finder Test, which I've taken. And he wrote this book that just got my attention. It was called Life's Greatest Question. Like, anytime you have any white space in your life... Um, which is time alone. That's like, there's nothing to do. It's a white space on your calendar. You can start to reflect and you can start to meditate on the great questions of life. Like, what are you doing for other people? How are you making the world better? What are you going to leave this world with when you're gone? Like, memento mori. Mm -hmm. Remember, remember you're mortal. That's the, that's the pendant I wear around my neck. Uh, each day I put it on, I have a little memento memorial moment. It's like, if today were my last day, would I be doing today what I would be doing if I knew it was my last day? All right. So what are the big questions? How'd you like the book? I loved it. Uh, I, I've read a lot of books that uh, try to tell you, teach you who you are and like the purpose of life. And they always come back to helping others. But this one uh, started with that. So that was kind of, and he talked about it in so many different ways that I loved it because it was like, that's just the most important part right from the start. Yeah. And he has a great, um, a book called the strength finder. And if you use the strength finder and go to the website and do the assessment, it'll talk to you about what your natural strengths are. And if you ever want to do really well in your life, uh, play to your strengths. If you work on your weaknesses, you have strong weaknesses you got to manage your weaknesses and you got to you got to strategize around weaknesses but you're here for a reason remember the eight intelligences there's right. eight known intelligences howard gardner's book there's things that everybody's good at some people are good at the intelligence of written words some people are good at speaking words some people are good at modalities and meditation some people are good with flowers and plants some people are good with animals some people are good with music art there's a lot of different ways you can contribute to the world which is your genius. But half the battle is finding what that is for you. Like, how are you going to leave the world? How are you going to use your strengths in a, in a way that can contribute? That's life's greatest question. That's the number one question. Right. Do you remember taking the strength finders? I don't. I, I mean, I remember yeah, I took it. I, I don't remember exactly. what my strengths are. I kind of know what my strengths are, but that's exactly how I'm I'd like thinking. to take it again. Actually. I'd like to take it again because when I took it, I feel like I've changed so much since yeah. then that I would love to take it again. That's but, a good. You got to yeah. calibrate your, yeah. yourself because bodies uh, and brains and minds move. Mm -hmm. Like you, you know, people do change. I don't agree with the the comment that people don't change. They do. People do change, and when you when you change, you got to go in for a calibration. Right. Because you're shaking up your shit. And you want to make sure that your your new vision and your new contributions and your new answers to your current life's greatest question serves what you're doing. Because there's a big mismatch a lot of times in life when people aren't doing what they're what makes them happy and what makes people happy usually is contributing. Right. In some I was way. Gonna, I was gonna say that uh to your point when you always say cut away is that if you're doing something five years ago that you is what you've done all your life but because you think that's what you should be doing but then you realize you have this big transformation you cut that completely out of your life that's a totally different test that you're taking now because if you answer those questions you're going to have a completely different life path you're on well that's true because you know i heard i heard uh, i was watching the news last night in you know, the, the nasty riots in in louisville and everyone wants to get rid of the police and somebody, and I'm not going what, what, what way. I'm, of course, I'm not in favor of that, by the way. I will go that way. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. In any way, uh, because if you get rid of the police, you know, in Seattle, they have a pimp. That's, that's, uh, mm. They're contracted. They're paying a pimp to, to help run the, uh, the inter interference between the gangs and everybody. They're paying this guy $150,000 who's basically a sex trafficker. Uh, so I don't get that. And I very rarely go political. But for the most part, here's the problem. If you defund the police or you get rid of anything in life, a void happens, and the universe does not let blank space stay still. Something fills it in, right? So if you, if you defund the police, something's going to occupy that. If there's no good strategy in place to do that, you'll have chaos. 
The same is true when you quit doing something like drinking every day, like I did. Like if you if you stop drinking, all that time and all those people that you spent that time with and and conversing with are gone. Something else immediately occupies that space. Alcoholics Anonymous have the meetings, so people stop drinking, they go to these meetings. And the issue I've always had with that is they're not necessarily productive meetings for many reasons. That there's there's um, you know, there's there's not like a, a lot of human potential talk in those meetings. A lot of it's looking backwards. I like to look forwards. But in life's greatest question, right, when you cut something out of your life and you decide to do something else because you've answered a question and it hit home with you, um, what you leave behind has a void. All right. So that's important, in my opinion. Definitely. But, uh, what was your uh, your big three? So here here's basically what the assessment yeah, line does. Line it up contri- for him, Contribify.com. <laughs> and he asks you a few things in this assessment. It's basically an assessment. That's, it's a 12-part assessment that talks about uh, things like your three greatest roles, your three most defining roles that define you, your three biggest strengths, and your life experience. He calls them miles, most influential life experiences. Great. And and that it'll help you. The outcome is two things. It's going to help you decide and determine where you can add the most value to the world to have the most fulfilling life. And I love the fact that he put in how you would fit in a team. Right. Because nothing meaningful can ever happen on your lo- your own. You got to have help, because no one's the perfect human being. So all great businesses need organization and structure. Um, but what were your three three defining roles? Miles or roles? Roles. Your roles. roles yeah. I put uh, this one. I put two in the first one, but I put friend and son because it was a kind of basically friends and family. Yeah. Entertainment because I do that. I love that probably the most thing like whenever I have those experiences where mm-hmm. I uh, make someone laugh or anything I love that and then three is a motivator interesting yeah I didn't know that that was going to be like what they define me as I was kind of just putting it as like a what I thought I thought it was going to like tell me what I am after like kind of take those roles and see how they compare to what my test mm-hmm. tells me but yeah that's what I put that's cool yeah yeah mine were uh, father uh, mentor and leader beautiful yeah yeah so these are these are things that I these are roles that are important to me, and that's kind of what I did. But then the miles. The uh, miles most, are interesting. Mo- tell me about your most influential life experiences. I put. I started training to dunk because that ch- changed so much about me with from physical to mental to spiritual to who I am as a person. Um, and yeah. then I said I stopped caring what other people think because yeah. the training to dunk kind of helped me find me and then stopped caring what other people think was like a big mind shift yeah. that made me see life completely different and then quit my job to pursue my dream life was another huge one, which ah, was only a year ago. Job. Avoid, avoid happy. Yeah. You filled it with something good. You know, yes. when you knock out something bad and put something better in its place. You have you eliminate a minus one and you add a plus one. It's a three point swing. Poof. It's pretty badass. Good job. Uh, mine were, I, it, this was hard for me because I had a few, uh, but, and I, I'm going to combine two as well. Like, yeah. Of course, terminal end stage liver failure that I survived was a uh, something that obviously is mm-hmm. a, a milestone and uh, influ- you know experience that I, that I share a lot. Um, and then going from, from, from no degree to 100% commission-based sales to CEO. Like that's something I'm very proud about, um, and, and that and that was that, that was just something that I did. I think that that is a journey that I can talk to a lot of people about about hope. And the other one is the hope of the comeback. You know, recreating myself and getting from you know humiliation and despair, despair and, and desperation to transformation and then transcendence. And I talk about transformation, which is a physical. A physical observation, like if you want to transform, you're going to observe a physical transformation. If you see someone lose weight or or just change their outlook, it's an observation. It's a transformation. That's an external thing. Uh, transcendence is a spiritual transformation. You can't see it. It's an internalized thing. So trans transcendence was uh you know my transcendence was a as a, a a big influential experience in my life. It's kind of what this book is, right? Cuz transcendence is kind of more about other people, so it's about something bigger than you. Yeah, of course. Like like there's a there's a journey to transformation. 
you know, we talk about the dominoes is a journey to going from nothing to something. Right from from hopelessness to hope. Remember the three elements of hope is that you believe in your heart of hearts that the world will be a better place than it is now in the future. You have uh, agency, like you have the ability and the and you have the your own creative process where you can do it. You believe in yourself, and then a plan. You got you you will pursue pathways and never stop. That's hope, and then and then you get into obviously. Uh, uh, input like you get feedback and outcomes and then you can start to transform because the transformation process is it takes time yeah. and it takes sometimes it takes additional resources it takes uh, liberation and then transcendence only can occur once you've transformed you have the time to really see what life's great question is that's the whole idea like what is it what's this all about and that's it in uh so in in this um you know, in this report that you get, you're going to get your greatest contributions, your greatest contributors. And he has three areas, um, create, relate, and operate. Once you figure out what they, what they do, you create that environment, you relate it to others, and then you run the operation, right? Even if it's a one-person operation in your life. Um, but but uh, the output's also coming in strength. What was your strengths? Strengths? Uh, That's the third, third area. I put... Um Mindfulness, mm-hmm. empathy, and work ethic. Do you put them in? I think I put those I in. Think they, oh, okay. For my strengths, not the not the. Uh, oh yeah, you do. You do. You these are inputs. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Your input were the, yeah the okay, strengths. The output are the three things. I yeah. got it. That's a cool test. Go to contribify dot com. Really great. I'm trying to get Tom on the show. Yeah. I'd love to talk to the number one. Um, nonfiction. Nonfiction Amazon writer, but I think the number one nonfiction writer, other than the Bible, by the way. Uh, of all time is Jack Canfield, Chicken Soup. Wow. I'm pretty sure that's true. Yeah. Um, I've heard that too. The strengths finder, I met Jack a couple times. My strengths were wisdom, experience, and perseverance. Those are three mm. strengths I brought to the table. What contributions did the the computer spit at you? <laughs> <laughs> I put, uh, well, should I go through like what they are first and then I'll tell you my three? Yeah. So ahead. for under the create uh, section, there's three sections to the pie. Under the create, there's initiating, challenging, teaching and visioning mm-hmm. and then under let me see it's, it shows you them all oh wait no it doesn't so it shows then the next one is under relating it has connecting energizing perceiving and influencing mm-hmm. and then under the last section which is uh, relate is Oper- operate oh operate where yeah. is it oh i skipped it by accident operate is organizing achieving and adapting Oh, mine has that. Twice. It was hard for me to find it too, but I have it. All right, yeah. So there you go. So mine were initiating, mm-hmm. uh, which says, "Be the one who gets things started." From projects to conversations and relationships, your efforts will help people act fast and move forward with confidence. Mm-hmm. And then the next one is energizing, which is because well-being is created in days and moments. You're a remarkable position to improve the engagement and effectiveness of teams. Be the one who energizes people's work days, makes work fun in the process. Yep. And three is perceiving. You have a unique gauge of the emotional temperature in a room or conversation, this ability to sense people's underlying feelings and can shape conversations, inform others, and keep groups moving forward in concert. Whoa. That's pretty tight. Yeah. It was pretty accurate. That's I, don't, I don't disagree with that. It almost was too accurate. I'm like, I felt like I knew that already because I do a lot of these tests for myself. I love learning it, though, but it was I always love taking them. Yeah, that's great. My contributions, uh, this is a great test. And, and, and if, you, if you struggle with this... Um, Take it. I, you know, you get it. First right. of all, if you buy the book, which is only 14 bucks. If you buy the hard copy book, you get two passes for this this exercise. So if you have a, a child or a spouse or a friend you want to do this with, it's pretty cool. The contributions from my my inputs were scaling. Anything you can do that saves others time and effort will have deep value. Mm. True. I mean, I always, I always took the very complex and made it simple and taught it to a bunch of people. Teaching, learning, and teaching are two central elements of growth. As you study new topics and develop people, you can share it with others. Definitely. Super, yeah. super accurate. And visioning. Almost every product, project, and organization starts with a vision that can lead to a better future. Wow. Like I thought that was pretty good. I'm yeah. pretty comfortable with where I am in my life, trying to mentor people. Yeah, it's um, really good. You know, in business and life to 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 achieve transcendence. That's really the the objective, 
and it's you know you can, sometimes when you come to somebody and say I help people transcend, like they'll think you're stoned. Yeah, <laughs> and that's not really where it's at. But that's the end of the journey. The end of the journey isn't wealth. You know, wealth is is not the end of the journey because you'll get there and you'll feel like you're the dog that caught the car. It's like, I have money now. I'm still pissed off and unhappy. Yeah. <laughs> Even after I bought all these things that I thought I wanted. Right. You know, it's it's not that. It's transformation physically uh, and emotionally and then it's transcendence spiritually. Right. That's does yours, the end of the race. Does yours have a quote at the top under your first snapshot? Or I'm wondering if it's the same quote as mine, like under the first. What is yours? Life's not what you get out of it. It's what you put back in. Oh, no, mine's different. Invest more time where your talents will yield the greatest return for others. Oh, wow. So, yeah, that's kind of I really cool. like that. It kind of gives you your own quote. I yeah. like that. This guy is one of my new yeah. favorite authors. I'm going to get this guy on the show. Yeah. Yeah. We'll get He's him. tight, and uh, we'll take the strength finder. Hope you like yeah. this uh, Life's Greatest Question, Tom Rath, and enjoy yourself and learn how you can contribute contribute <laughs> contribute yeah uh, well it's that mo- he uh, his website screwed me up contribute because his website's called contribify.com yeah. a little tricky enjoy enjoy